The Astros escape out of Anaheim with a series win. After the implosion Saturday night, the Astros look like they would go down in the game three of the series. They did not. They came back, and we had some late inning fireworks. Let's talk about this and what issues the Astros may be facing going to Colorado on this edition of Locked on Astros. Alvarez, it's a high drive center field. Veer leans back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. You find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at HM Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. Guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and become an everydayer. Somebody that listens to our podcast every day, go and give us a thumbs up. Go and subscribe to us on YouTube and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify. Wherever you listen to your podcast, go and check out the Locked On Astros podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about uh, each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. For So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed um, Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit only is available to U.S. customers. Eligible items apply. Exclusions do apply. And it sounds like um, Dusty Baker is going to have to have some exclusions with who he uses in the bullpen pretty soon <laughs> because he's using the same four pitchers all the time. And apparently Dana Brown, we'll talk about it in a little bit, uh, is going to say, yeah, Dusty, uh, we're going to need you to come in on Saturday. And we also need you to stop using the same four pitchers <laughs> all the time because their arms are about to fall off. So oh, this man. weekend was crazy. The last two games was super stressful. But the Astros needed today's game. Saturday's game has to go down as one of the worst loss losses of the season. And then yeah. not only the loss, but the injury news you've seen from Bravaldez go out. We'll talk about that. Then uh, Chaz McCormick with two home runs today. We'll have an update on Jeremy Pena and um, Valdez. And uh, with some good updates or some okay updates on, I guess, on uh, Jordan Alvarez, and you went to go see Jose Kitty pitch as well. So that's some of the stuff yeah. that we'll talk about on this edition of the Locked on Nationals podcast. Man, that is a lot. Wow, what a series. I know you fit all that in. I was like, Eric, how fast can you do? No, actually, I did not. But, Eric, I mean, look, I know the 800-pound gorilla in the room is probably Saturday's game and what happened, and – I really think had they lost this game today, um, some of the same things would have been said today that were said yesterday. Right. Where they put up a four spot in the in the seventh inning, the Angels, you know, and you're just going, oh, like, what is going on here? What are we doing? And this look, this this Angels team, for what for what it's worth, they came out and fought and they exposed our our vulnerabilities. They exposed our issues that we've been having on the mound. And, but what's interesting is despite that implosion on Saturday and even with winning the series as ugly as it was, I believe I sent to you um, on the phone that the Astros are 27 and 20 on the road. That's the second best road record in major league baseball. So if there's a silver lining here, kids, we won the series. Okay. Um, we had several things happen. Um, Alex Bregman hit his first career four-hit game. Kyle Tucker had a four-hit game. So that was huge. You had some key ABs at the end by, by Bly Madris. We were kind of calling him Blah Madris a little bit. Kessinger got another hit. I mean, look, they contributed when they needed to. And maybe it was a win. Maybe it was an ugly win. But you needed this. You needed this, especially after last night. 
And Dusty Baker showing emotion in the dugout was great as well. Yeah, and you see then Astros announcers also uh, showing emotions. Uh, yesterday on Saturday's game, that was one of the most stressful games, especially the Astros. What had a nine to three lead, then a twelve yep. to nine lead, and it's one of those games that like, how the heck did you, that game get away? You have your closer out there, and he can't get the job done, and it's just a situation where the Angels are okay, but outside of Shohei Itani. They're not that great a team. And no. so, especially with Mike Trout out, and they have some young players. They, I'm not going to say they're terrible. I don't think they're uh, Oakland A's terrible. But I think that they've they've um, shown that they are competitors. And what they did on Saturday, you can't, you can't take all the credit away from the Angels. Like you said, they fought back. But the Astros' bullpen also just mm. gave it up. And uh, you saw today with uh, what happened in today's game, the bullpen tried to give it up as well. And But then you, you saw Maton almost give up the, get the lead. But then Kyle Tucker with that catch that nobody thought was mm. – it and the ESPN guys, Alex Bregman, after the game said, Yeah, I didn't think he was gonna catch it, but he just came out of nowhere and just like, Yeah, I got the ball. And it was just like this was a this was a playoff series because the Angels are playing for their playoff relevance. Because if they are still in the playoff chase, they're not gonna trade Shoei Itani. Right. But if they're out of it, they they have to make a decision because they're not going to bring him back next year. So they have to either be like, okay, well, let's keep well, him, just get a draft pick, or let's go ahead and trade him and get a big, massive haul because he's going to get – he's a hitter and a pitcher. Well, let's be honest right now with all these injuries. There's no way the Angels make the playoffs. I mean, I'm not going to say it's 0%, but I'm going to say they're a lot closer to the zero than anybody, I think, in our division outside of the Oakland A's. The Mariners may have a shot. But I'm sorry, the Angels don't have it. The Angels do have some young players that um, Cabbage, I, I, I've actually seen him hit in Sugarland this year when they visited. Um, he is a stud. You know, Joe Adele, he and Cabbage were leading um, the PCL in home runs. They were one and two. And so, look, they've got a promising future. But, yeah. Eric, that that game, you know, um, someone mentioned Mike Moustakis, you know, Mike Moustakis was showing some of the mojo he had back in 2015 when the Royals won the world series. And so he kind of was a little bit of an Astros killer in this series, but the, the implosion by the bullpen and then the seeming just undoing of Ryan Presley at the end of that game, Presley up to that point had pitched 12, and one thirds innings basically without allowing a run. Right. And then he comes in and just has an awful ninth inning. And then of course, everybody's calling for him to be DFA again. And I get so tired of the recency bias and everybody wanting to You're fire fine. somebody or move, like, well, I, I see a DFA Montero. You're not going to DFA Montero. Quit saying that. It's not even a reality. Like, just, like every time you do bad at your job, do you get fired because you make a mistake? Look, Montero has not been, he has been one of the worst performers baseball wise when it comes to his position and relief pitching, but we're not going to DFA anybody guys. Quit saying that. Save yourself the trouble Presley literally in one inning gave up five hits, three runs, two earned, and one home run. And, and look, his ERA still sits at 283. Okay. Yeah, um, yes, I'm playing music to calm you oh, down. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, I'm I'm fine. Okay. I'm right. fine. There's there's no panic in me. Okay. Um, I'm just talking about everybody else that's flipping out about when a player doesn't do something, right? It's like we want to just kick them off the team. And it it, it makes no sense. This team has struggled with injuries. Right. When your top players are out, your team's not going to perform. No offense to Kessinger or Madris or the guys that were in the lineup today. But when you look at the lineup, you're like, okay, this is not a super powerful lineup. They are not going to probably score a ton of runs. Right. But they did today. And so it's. It's one game at a time, and you need Montero to fix it. You need Montero to get better because w whether you like it or not, he's on this team. And unless he completely craps the bed, he's on this playoff roster because of what he did last year. I, I, right. I'm just telling you that's the reality. You may not like it, 
but that's the reality. But I, I'm here to focus on Bregman, like Bregman getting on the ball. RP3 from the from the big radio station there and in um in in southeast Louisiana wrote an article, a scathing article saying what's wrong with Bregman. And ever since then, Bregman's heated up. So who knows? Maybe that turned the tide for Alex Bregman. And Kyle Tucker tonight, man, what a beast. Yeah, definitely. And uh, d- we'll talk a little bit more about the kind of what happened in the late innings today's game. But I do want to highlight something. Um, Mike Mistowskis, you brought him up earlier. He had that home run. But uh, he also had something that was almost a home run. And you had uh, you had Kyle Tucker reach over the wall and basically hit his elbow going down. But this is the stats on that one. It was uh, off the bat. It was 95.9 miles per hour off the bat. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. 98.5 miles per hour off the bat. It was a distance of uh, 362. And it would have been a home run in 25 of 30 ballparks. So okay. Kyle Tucker did rob him of a home run there. And I, I was a little bit worried about him kind of hurting his elbow there. I was like um, sleeper, a little bit worried there. But uh, definitely something we can address is the home runs that were hit late in this game. The home runs that were hit in general. And the Astros just showing the fire that we haven't really seen. Well, I guess Saturday the offense was there. But uh, there's a lot for us to discuss. So uh, hang on. No, yeah, definitely. Sleeper is this great app. I want you all to go to it. I promise you that if you use Sleeper today and you go there, you can win 100 times your money on daily fantasy baseball. Sleeper is now offering to pay you up to 100 times the payout for up to eight pick contests in each game. Choose as many as eight players that you like and pick more or less of your favorite baseball stats like home runs, strikeouts, hits, and more. Get your picks right, and you could win big, okay? Let me tell you about Sleeper. This amazing website is at your app store. Go to the Sleeper app and download it today. If you think your guy hitting a home run was fun, we'll wait till you add him to your Sleeper payout. And then the opposing pitcher is factored in. All these things you can choose. You can choose two or more players, and you can use several different categories and you can win really big. So you, what, what you do is you get dynamic payouts. With dynamic payouts, the money comes to you faster than any other site. That's right. You can get personalized picks all through it. It is the fastest organically growing fantasy platform in the world with over 5 million active users. Use a promo code locked on and Sleeper will match your first deposit up to $100. Predict the hottest baseball stats like home runs, hits, or strikeouts and get that match on that $100 deposit. Swing for the fences with the promo code locked on. Sign up today and you'll get that deposit match up to $100. And the Astros play the Rockies on Tuesday. They have a day off on Monday, Tuesday, 7 40 Central Standard Time. 7.40 p.m. Catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast at SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Astros. Don't forget that they are the Astros regional rivals, um, the Rockies are, because that's who they are. Be, yeah. <laughs> Basically, that's why the Astros could be playing them every year. So um, I like the uh, like some teams like the. Uh, Baltimore Orioles are going to be playing some of the like the Nationals and or some of the uh, the the better teams, but the Astros get to play the Rockies every year. So that's something that's going to be happening. Uh, so that's why we're playing them in Mexico city. And so just something to look forward to there. You're going to be seeing a lot of Rockies over the years, but um, definitely Kyle Tucker had a massive home run. Uh, you don't see very often a, something with the exit velocity, I mean, sorry, expected batting average of a thousand, but that's what his home run had. And you oh, could gosh. hear it. It was crushed. Like I love the way ESPN had the uh, where you can actually hear the when the, the ball crack of the bat, bat. right? Yeah. And so that was that would have been a home run in thirty out of thirty ballparks. It was a hit distance of four thirty seven, a exit velocity of one hundred and eight point two. Then you had Alex Bregman's home run. That would have been a home run in twenty nine out of thirty ballparks. Uh, which one would it not been a home run in? But it had an expected batting average of 800. And so it would have not been a home run in Camden Yards. Okay. 
Of right. course, nothing's a home run in Camden Yards. That's because they push the yard, the fence back. That's why. Then- that's why Adley Rutschman doesn't have 30 home runs right now. So you can Baltimore, you can blame your own stadium for that. Yeah, one. but Chaz McCormick today too. Um, you can't say enough about what he did. Like that one that the first one he hit barely got over. It hit the mm-hmm. little uh, screen and bounced over. There's a little bit of confusion. Was it a home run or was it not a home run? But that second one was a no doubter. And so Chaz McCormick is like, you want to trade me? You want to go get another center fielder? I'm your answer at center field. Uh, don't do not do that. And then you had Jake Myers, who apparently cut his hair. I didn't see that he cut his hair, but yeah, he, uh, he had a he home looked run. Like, he looked like he was 15. I was like, who is this? Who do we call up? Oh, that's, that's look, look, that's little Jakey Myers. It's <laughs> That's a 15U Jake. That's what he looked like tonight. That was great. But yep. for him and Chaz to go back to back, that right. I, I love seeing that. But those home runs uh, for Jake Myers and Chaz McCormick were both in the seventh inning. Uh, Chaz McCormick's had an exit velocity of 101.8. It would have been a home run in one out of 30 ballparks. Um, and then Jake Myers had exit velocity of 98.4. It had exit, sorry, it, uh, it would have been a home run in three out of 30 ballparks. So hey. that was basically <laughs> – a uh, home run there and only there. So, uh, but it still counts. And so I, I'm glad to see that. Then you had a total of five home runs in this game and Chaz McCormick had two of them and you've seen yeah. him kind of uh, light up recently. And I think that this is Chaz McCormick saying, look, uh, this is my time to shine. Uh, Dusty, you, you got to play me more. And I, uh, I know Jolks has been having good season. Jake Myers, here and there. But. I was surprised. I was surprised to not see Corey Jolks in the starting lineup. Um, I thought it was an interesting move. Um, you know, playing, you know, Myers and McCormick. Okay. I mean, look, I don't know. At the end of the day, things are going to happen the way they happen. Baseball is going to baseball. I, I, I just think Corey jokes, when I look at his average over the last 30 games, Eric, he's hitting, he's hitting well over 300. His last like seven games, he's hitting 438. His last 15 games, he's hitting 380 or something like that. And, you know, he got in the game and he advanced the runners, you know, and I mean, he it had a weird freaking, curve on it too. It he had a like weird spin. spin. Yeah. Like the way that ball came off the bat, there was, I mean, you were not getting there, but he moved the runners over. Heck, you even had Bly Madris um, contribute with a walk and end up scoring a run. So all these things matter. Diaz got a hit. Um, you know, you, everybody contributed. Jose Abreu was 0 for 6 today, which is which is weird. He had six at-bats. Him and Dubon are the only two guys to get six at-bats, you know, the baseball way. Bregman had them, but he also had a walk. And so, but man, your top three hitters have, what is it? Um, I'm sitting here looking at 16 at bats and they get nine hits, nine for 16. That's really good. And in the beginning of this game, which was brutal, was they were leaving everybody on base. They were stranding runners. Bases loaded. Get out. Um, Three for 17 on the second. Yeah. And all of, they, they had runners in scoring position with two outs or before two outs. And I was like, they're not going to win this game. They're trying really hard to lose this game. And they put up all their runs in inning seven through nine. That right. is insane. And again, the second best road record. I like it, but we've got to clean some things up and we've got to get some guys back. And, you know, yeah, we'll, injuries we'll have talk really about that in a little bit uh, about the health update. But um, uh, before we do that, Greg Kessinger was your starting shortstop. And this is after he replaced Jeremy Pena late in Saturday's game. And a lot of people are blaming Kessinger for basically ruining Saturday's game because he threw the ball away. A lot of people said also said, well, Jose Abreu could have stretched a little bit further and caught that ball. But in that game, it was. It was really the bullpen. Uh, the bullpen just kind of blew everything. After Farmer Valdez left with his uh, discomfort, then you had Jeremy Pena leave the game with what was described as a cramp as well. I think that, that that's what basically Farmer Valdez had as well. So uh, it was basically Kessinger going in there and bat- – 
pressure situation and he just made a bad throw. Uh, so I'm not excusing it, but to say that that game's totally on him, the bullpen no, was, should have held the, the lead. And that that's the thing. That was a team loss. Okay. Yeah. I mean, baseball is the ultimate team sport and you win as a team, you lose as a team. And I loved Kessinger's first at bat today. He rips a double, almost hits a home right. run. And that's what pros do. You got to know that like Kessinger comes from a line of major league players. His grandfather was a multi-time all-star. Okay. Um, it was seven or eight time all-star played with the Cubs, the White Sox and one other team. I forget the other team he played for, but this kid knows how to ball and he knows about the game. So good, good on him getting back in there, putting the bat in his hand and actually doing something. He did have two hits today. He was two for four. He had a walk, he had a strikeout, but he had a double and he had a run. And so he contributed today. His OPS is 891. Look, in this small sample size, he's doing what he's supposed to do. So I just think a lot of times we get recency bias. I understand a lot of fans have passion. They love the Astros. We're so used to the winning ways. Right. We I tried to warn you. We tried to warn you this season was going to be different. Yeah, for sure. And uh, in a second, we're going to go ahead and talk about, give you uh, injury updates. And the Astros are apparently kicking the tires on some Chicago Cub players. We'll go ahead and talk about that as well. And uh, this episode is also brought to you by Hooters because they make you happy. That's right. Hooters does make you happy, just like a series win in Anaheim. And I'm here to talk to you about Hooters. If you have got buddies and you want to go hang out and have some have some beer, um, have some wings and watch the Astros beat the Colorado Rockies and go head to your local Hooters. Because let me tell you, if you go there Tuesday, they have nine ninety nine burger and fries. Wednesdays, buy one, get one wings for that second game. Thursday, nineteen ninety nine wings and Big Daddy Bundle. And Friday, crab legs, $19.83. And anytime they have $3 Blue Moon drafts, $9.99 Michelob Ultra pitchers, no matter the occasion, Hooters is there to make you happy. Let me tell you about two things happening. Because whether you're in Galveston, Pearland, Humble, Sugarland, anywhere in between, you can find a Hooters near you. Pearland, they are doing a Toys for Tots drive. That starts on Monday, halfway to Christmas. For two weeks, they are doing donations for Toys for Tots. And also on um, August 17th, they are going to be having a pageant. You can go in there and sign up. It is a closed restaurant event. Buy tickets to that. That'll be fun. A July 25th Astro bus trip. And in NASA, they have a bus trip on the 24th of August um, against the Red Sox. Go check it out. And I mean, you go sign up, you pay for your ticket, you get food there. You get your bus ticket to the game. You don't have to drive. You get to go enjoy the game with the world-famous Hooters girls. So if you want to hang out somewhere fun and with great wings, go to Hooters. Why? Because Hooters make you happy. And the Astros do play the Rockies. Oops. Central Standard Time. Every pitch of the Astros home broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Astros. Alrighty, so yeah, this is definitely going to be an interesting series, and I can't wait to see them uh, play at uh, Coors Field. I don't think it's called Coors Field anymore. I don't. Yes, know yeah, called. yeah. It's still called yeah. Coors Field. I okay. mean, I don't. Right. I don't call it. I don't know what by anything else. So, well, um, I think that uh, we could go and do the health update, or we can go and talk about the trades. Uh, chat. What do y'all want to do first? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that they want us to go and talk about the trade talk. And so um, then we can go ahead and do the health updates in a second. So um, uh, for what it's worth, Bob Nightingale has, uh, I don't know if he has insight with the Astros. Uh, so, oh, people want to do the health update first. Okay. Let's, I think they're, are they being silly? You, you're on mute, Brett. Okay. Let's 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 go ahead and give them the health update. Um, okay. I, I you know I can basically tell them Jose Arquiti's healthy. The dude's throwing. He felt good. His velocity was there. He's actually going to pitch on their. I believe it's like an eleven, like eleven a.m. game. It's like an actual day game. I think it's Tuesday or Wednesday this week in Sugarland. So he's going to get his second start there. Um, when I talk to Arquiti after the game, y'all have to go um, check out that that post-game interview, he's feeling good. So 
that's definitely a good sign for the Astros. What about the other guys? What about Jordan? Do we have an update on Jordan? Well, I think he's down there in Sugarland. He's hitting home runs left and right. Oh, wait, he's not. Uh, he had a <laughs> head cold. And so uh, he has not actually started playing yet. So he was supposed to start playing on Friday. And I know that Jose Arquiti actually made a joke that said, well, all these fans are not here to see me pitch. They're here to see um, Alvarez go out there and hit. And so they said he's going to be back in a couple of days. We plan on getting him out there and getting back on track. Thank God it was only a head cold. He should be fine. So uh, basically nothing big. And so hopefully it's uh, something small. And uh, then also on Michael Brantley, this is a very weird comment from Dana Brown. He said, you ready for this? I'm ready. We're hoping to get him back one way or the other. It would be a big bonus. So, okay. What, <laughs> what have I said? I'm sticking to my guns and I hate being this guy. I'm sticking to my guns, Eric. There's no, I yeah. just don't believe, I don't believe that Michael Brantley's going to play another game with the Astros. And if he does, I will be elated, but I just don't see it. He's in the, we know he's there. He's at the game, giving each other high, giving people high fives. He ain't coming back, kids. Jalen, look, my guy Jalen's got my back on this. And look, Kaylee Scott even has it. Brantley is done. And look, guys, I want to be the guy that says he's done. And then when he comes back, be pleasantly surprised. Sorry, Dana. I'm not believing it. Yeah. One way he's coming back and one play. way or the other way, way he's is, just going to be holding a clipboard all season. So what is he going to be like the new orbit mascot? I yeah. mean, how, I mean, come on. So Jose Abreu and Michael Brantley ran bases prior to today's game. Um, and uh, Baker said that Altuve will go with the Astros to Colorado, meaning he's not going to go ahead and start the rehab assignment yet. So he's not ready for that yet. So uh, we don't know when he should be. Maybe by the end of the week, he can go ahead and start uh, re repeating. I mean, reporting to Sugarland. So uh, Dusty Baker also, we know he has favorites in the bullpen and he likes to use <laughs> those favorites in the bullpen. Uh, we, we all know the names, um, Hector Neris, uh, Ryan Presley, uh, Phil McDowell, and then uh, who else am I missing? Uh, Montero. Mon no, not Montero. The, who's the other guy? Uh, uh, Stanek? I don't know. But there's four guys in the Astros bullpen, <laughs> basically, that the Astros are always using all the time. And this is what Dana Brown had to say. When talking with Dusty, he'll try to back off some of these guys from time to time. But we'll be on the market probably, too, for some bullpen help if we can. Our guys are taxed. And if you look at uh, – I've got all this. Entering, uh, the, today, 32 major league relievers have made 40 appearances. The Astros have 40 of them. Brian Abreu is the other guy I couldn't think of. Okay. Brian, Abreu, uh, Brian Abreu has 45 appearances. He leads the league. Then uh, Maton has 43. Uh, that was before today's game. Neris has 42, and Presley has 41. So the Astros' bullpen arms are about to fall off because uh, they're being used for half of the games, essentially. Well, yeah, they are. But look, Presley's your closer, and he's been excellent. So I have no problems there. Nary's, for the most part, has been excellent. I have no problems there. The problem is we've had to rely on a lot of extra pitching help that we haven't really had in the past. Yeah. We've had stalwart veterans. And to their credit, they've actually done really well. I, I mean, they haven't done a bad job. But I think sometimes when we talk about overuse, my my concern isn't necessarily maybe the 40 number as much as it is how many times in a row he would use them, two yeah. or three games in a row, right? And so that's where you just wonder. And they were talking about tonight on the ESPN broadcast. I mean, that pitch clock, really, you have to be in a different kind of shape. Eduardo Perez said he spoke with Neres, and he said – had we known and fully understood what it was going to take to pitch with this pitch clock, my off-season routine would have been different. So next year, I think you'll see pitchers dealing with it better because you've got to have a little bit more cardiovascular um, shape than you have had in the past because now you've got to rush. You've got to have a high heartbeat most of the time. 
So I think that really has has contributed as well. But yeah, we've got to get an answer to using some different arms or I wonder how much Dana and Dusty agree. Yeah. And so we'll have to see. I know that they're going to definitely attack um, the market hard at the trade deadline. But a lot of people want to know what the update is on Farmer Valdez and uh, Jeremy Pena. We know that Farmer Valdez left with uh, something wrong with his calf on uh on Friday on Saturday's game or something was uh, wrong with it. Um, I think he said it got a little bit stiff. And so um, no new updates other than Dusty Baker said that Valdez is in good frame of mind, but no other update from what happened on Saturday. And so what he said that he felt a little pull in my left leg when he threw a pitch, I don't know if it was just exhaustion or dehydration or what, but it just felt like I pulled something or a little bit there, something tight. So um, basically uh, he said, there's no reason to try to push it there. It's probably cramp. That's why I'd say this. Yeah. 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 It was a cramp. I was like either our strength and conditioning guys need to force them to hydrate themselves more or stretch them better. Three obliques and a cramp. Come on. Like, like are are like ten year olds running running these guys around, and what yeah. are they doing pregame? What are they doing post game? What are they doing in between? I mean, look, it's all about your routine. Yeah. So uh, I know Jeremy Pena said that it was just a cramp, uh, and he felt like on Saturday he should be ready to go on Sunday. But Dusty Baker decided with the off day on Monday he was going to give Jeremy Pena the off day uh, the day off on Sunday. So it's just a cramp. Um, so just get the heating pad and just go ahead and take care of business, Jeremy Pena, and hopefully he'll be back in the lineup on, on, uh, Tuesday. So the Astros don't seem too concerned from that. Uh, so if it's just cramps, it's just something that just happened. So, uh, to kind of close out the show, I do want to go ahead and, uh, do the, uh, from USA today, Bob Nightingale went, wrote a whole article and there's like a little bit of a quote there about what he said about the Astros and interest in some Cub players. So I'm going to go and read that. The Houston yeah. Astros have checked in with the Chicago Cubs about starter Marcus Stroman and center fielder. Uh, let me get it going. Uh, where is it down here? I'm trying to get the booing going. <laughs> and center fielder Cody Bollinger, each of them who are expected to be available. So the Astros – have a lot of history with Cody Bellinger, especially uh, being from the the Dodgers. And I think that Marcus Stroman makes a lot of sense for the Houston Astros. This year, he's um, actually having a great season. Was he uh, 10 and 6 with um, a 2.88 ERA? So his ground ball percentage is over 58%. Uh, he's got a 2.6 war on the season. So I think that he would be a great fit for this Astros uh, rotation. Exactly what you need. Cody Bellinger, on the other hand, um, he is batting 305 with 12 home runs and 48 RBIs. Sorry, 35 RBIs with 11 stolen bases. So now there is some histories there. There is some history there. <laughs> So you think, um, you think, Carlos, but, uh, Correa. Yeah. but Carlos Correa isn't here anymore. It's not 2017. The past is in the past. The Dodgers just signed Jake Marisnik. I mean, look, we're all, we're all trading cheaters here. Right. And so look, we know the Dodgers cheated as well. So look, a cheater knows a cheater, whatever. Look at the end of the day, if Cody Bellinger makes his team better, I mean, look, right. why not kick the tires on it? But it definitely has to be, you definitely have to get the clubhouse in on that because that's that's not, I think, as easy as just making the deal, right? Who do you give up? And if you bring him in, the guys in the clubhouse, Bregman, Altuve, better be okay with it. If they're not, I would say no on them. Yeah, I also heard that the Yankees were interested in Chaz McCormick, but I just don't see the Astros cha uh, trading Chaz. The Yankees the are in last place in their division. The Yankees are cooked, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, we'll have to go ahead and talk more about this potential trade later. But guys, thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. And go and check out the Rockies playing the Astros Tuesday night at 740 
p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the hometown broadcast on SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Astros and get all that play-by-play coverage. My name is Eric Heisman. He is Brett Chancey. We are the Locked on Astros podcast. Go ahead and make us your daily listen. Become an everydayer like so many of our listeners are. And uh, just thank you for your support. And Brett, any closing thoughts? Oh, man, let's just go to Colorado and kick some Colorado Rocky butt. Let's go. Make sure you subscribe to us. Make sure you give us a like if you're watching live. And go Strokes, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeehaw! No?